Hey folks, I'm Dennis. Thanks for watching my video. I've got one of the more popular pressure washers sold in a lot of the big box stores. It's an XL VR2522. I've had it for several years. Mine, like many others, have started having problems with the pumps. So today I'm going to show you how to replace and upgrade the pump and um, get this uh, pressure washer back working again. Now the, the pump that comes with these pressure washers is a uh, piston pump and uh, they bolt on a lot differently than the replacement pump that I bought. What I bought, I bought it online. It's one of these they call a vertical pump. You can get them online for about 80 bucks and it bolts on a little differently so you have it bolts on using the motor bolts instead of uh, the four bolts that the original factory piston pump bolts to. It looks to me like when it's installed the uh, hose connection uh, for the water hose and for the, um, the lance hose is going to be a little short so what I intend to do is take off the plastic shrouds, which I've never liked anyway on this pressure washer, and just leave them off, which will make it easier to get to this. I'll leave a link below in the description of the video where you can buy the same pump. Comes with some minimal instructions and uh, a thermal valve that you have to install yourself, and that's it. First, let's take apart this pressure washer. You gotta take these two screws out first. They take a T20 or a Torx 20 bit. You gotta flip it up. You got two screws up in here. They're also torques. They take a T27 bit. And to get them out, uh, you're gonna need an extension or uh, at least a long handled driver. That's what they look like. Pop this bottom shroud off and it's got a couple little ears in the back that you can just pop loose and then the whole thing will come out, so. Here's how the factory pump looks. It's got a surge hose, which is where a lot of leaks come from. And then also up here at the caps where the pistons are, they also tend to leak after a while. So that's what's going on with mine. I've got a surge hose on there that works fine, but I've started to get some leaking from, um, well, it's actually behind this piece, back up in here, the caps over the, uh, the pistons. Or the next thing to do is to get this pump out. Now the factory pump um, has four bolts right here on the bottom of the engine uh, which are different than the engine mounting bolts. I think you can probably see those. They're here. Um, there's three of them but you got a pump mounting bolt here, 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 and here. So they're a little tough to get to. They're half inch bolts. That's all those. So you got to get this. Uh, you got to get this five eighths bolt out. The best way I know to do it is there's a there's a cam that's between this piece and this piece that goes on the bottom of the engine shaft. So I've got it where the wide part of the cam is up high. And I'm gonna stick a long screwdriver in there to brace it up so I can get this bolt out. Because otherwise you're just gonna turn the engine. So I got, the, I got that cam basically squeezed up against my screwdriver now. Break that bolt loose. Take my screwdriver out. All right, so that's how you pull the pump off. So that adapter has got to come off. There's a, there's a set screw in it, and it takes a 5 32nd Allen wrench to get that set screw out. And you just take it off, and unfortunately, the key is molded into that adapter, so we're going to have to have a key. And that's okay. I'll leave everything in the description that we need. Now the engine is held on with three bolts. You need a 9 16 socket or wrench. There's one. There's two. And there's three.
Take the engine off. Set it off to the side. Keep it upright so you don't spill stuff everywhere. I want to get rid of this upper plastic shroud just because I don't like it in my way. Uh, if you want to leave it, you're, you don't have to do anything else. If you want to get rid of it, looks to me like we got to take this whole kind of mounting plate off. So you need a 3-8 a three socket. And I'm going to take these two bolts out on each side. It's got some plastic ears in here. It's got uh, plastic rivets at each one of those catches that's in there. So the rivets have to come out first to allow the catches to come loose. So I'm just gonna pop them out with a screwdriver because I'm not gonna reuse them. So now you just pop these out, which is a whole lot easier without those clips. <laughs> For those rivets in there. There. these back on okay one of the differences between the original pump and this replacement pump is um, the original pump bolted to a coupler that was on the bottom of the engine shaft this one goes directly on the engine shaft but you notice it's got a keyway so you have to have a key so uh, it took me a couple of stops but i had to i went to a uh, automotive parts house and the key that this needs is 316 square you could go to a hardware store and get a piece of 316 stock hardware store was closed yesterday so the parts house had key stock in a 12 inch length so i cut a two inch key um, and then when you cut it just make sure you take a file and uh, knock the burrs off of the corners because you don't want your key to be have any burrs on it that'll fit in the bottom of the engine shaft and into the uh, uh, coupling for the pump and the other thing is um, the uh, original engine mount bolts on this pressure washer are one and a quarter so this pump it actually bolts up to the engine mount holes these feet are three quarters of an inch thick so since the original bolt is uh, one and a quarter that means i need to add three quarters to the bolt so i got some uh, two inch bolts so what you need for this is a 3 8 uh, 16 it's a 3 8 bolt 16 pitch thread so a 3 8 16 by two inch bolt you need three of those the instructions on the pump mentions that you might need some spacers to go between the mounting plate and the the bottom of the mounting plane and the and the pump i've just got some 3 8 washers just to be safe i'm going to show you how to test how i test fit it um, make sure your key doesn't fall out yeah so i've got about a washer's worth of space between the engine mount and the the pump foot so that's about the thickness of this mounting plate that the motor mounts to but just to be safe i'll probably put a washer in between the plate and each foot uh, maybe even two just to be safe set it up set the engine up there make sure you got the bolt holes lined up so i'm going to put two in there just to make sure they're lined up so now as long as i don't knock it out of the way or knock it out of alignment i'm good to go there take the pump make sure you know where your keyway is get your key in there 
line up your, your keyway on the uh, pump and then get the pump on the shaft like so. I got a deep well socket that works out just about right and I'm going to prop that pump up. If you got four hands at this stage it might be better but uh, this will work okay. So I'm going to get my first bolt in there and I'm going to put I've decided I'm going to put two washers on top of it for spacing just to be safe. Get it threaded up. Same thing with this one. Get my two washers in there. Get that one threaded up. It's easier to just get these washers slid up on top of the the pumpier and set there and then just be kind of gentle when you go up in there with the bolt to not knock them off and line them up. What you don't want to do is cross thread these bolts because um, the block on these engines are aluminum and you don't want to strip that out so make real sure make sure you take your time to get it threaded up there right. So now that that's in there, I can tip it back. Now I just need to start tightening them up. This one's got the output port right in front of it, so I'm gonna use a wrench on it. Now besides putting the handle back on, the last thing we have to do is back here, got to put in the thermal valve. There's a thermal valve that comes with it. It's got one thread worth of thread seal on it. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of Teflon tape on it. Teflon tape is good for up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit, so it'll be fine. This pump's not going to get any hotter than that. If it does, I'll probably have a bigger problem. So I'm going to go ahead and put a couple of laps of uh, Teflon tape on there just to make sure I don't have a leak. And it takes a 5 8 wrench, so it goes right here. I didn't realize the axle had that view block, so that's the thermal valve there. It goes into here. Um, just tighten it up till it's snug. And see, that's fine without that shroud. Um, I've got good access to the hose and the wand. And then here's your uh, detergent uptake. So if you, uh, you know, if you're using bleach or detergent or something like that, that's where you stick your hose. So without this shroud, it's easily accessible, and it's got an unloader valve. Uh, you can, um, I think that's 17 millimeter, and that's 10 if I if I remember the instructions right. And you can you can change the pressure also. This comes set at 2800 psi, which is a little bit higher than the factory pump. The factory pump is 2500. I'll get it all hooked up, and we'll try it out. So it looks like I'm going to be real happy with this. The, uh, the pump went on fine. It works perfectly fine with the uh, engine that's on this pressure washer. I just did a, just one section of the driveway, so I have to do some more. I might have to quit because it's starting to thunder and lightning. I don't want to get struck by lightning. <laughs> Pretty easy upgrade, and uh, I like the added pressure. I can tell there's a difference in the pressure that I'm getting, so that's nice. And uh, looks like everything's going to work out fine. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Check out some of my other videos on my channel. Give me a thumbs up if you would. Subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you back soon. God bless you.